All right, trickies and trickers. Now it's time for the second episode of Review of the Day, Fascination. Jake is lounging on the couch in the quarters he shares with his father. He gives an earring he intended to give to Marta. Instead of helping the residents of the station prepare for the yearly Bajoran Gratitude Festival, as his father figured he would. It turns out that Jake doesn't have much to be grateful for, since Marta has been accepted to his school 300 light years away on Regulus 3. Ben encourages his son to go to the festival, since the point of the celebration is to let go of one's troubles and make a new start. Jake reluctantly agrees to go, but promises not to enjoy it. In the Ripple Mad, Chief O'Brien and Dr. Bashir are drinking coffee and talking about the impending return of, of O'Brien's wife and daughter to the station, so they'll be visiting for the duration of the festival. It seems that O'Brien is having a rough time without them, and tends to make the most of their time together even if it is only two days. Bashir hopes O'Brien can convince his wife to stay, since, in her absence, they have played too many games of racquetball and he doesn't know much and doesn't know how much more stress his elbow can take. On the promenade, Odo encounters Major Kira, who is later presented with the festival and is busy putting up decorations. Odo says he would like to join Kira in celebrating the festival, but it turns out that Vedic Borelli will be coming to the station to do the same, which dims Odo's enthusiasm. Later, O'Brien and Kira are in one of the Cocker Bay airlocks waiting for the transfer to arrive. Borelli disembarks, and it goes off with Kira joyfully. A few moments later, O'Brien's wife and daughter do the same, but then it nearly is joyful. According to Keiko, the chief's wife, it was the worst trip. Molly, his daughter, doesn't feel so good either, and when the chief asks her what's wrong, she vomits noisily onto his uniform. At just that moment, Ambassador Loaxana Troy steps out of the airlock. Loaxana says, Oh, you poor dear. I should never have given you all that candy. Really, Loaxana? You think? In the security office, Odo outlines to Lieutenant Jones, a star his security officer, the procedure by which he monitors Quark. When Mrs. Trey walks in, asks Jones to leave so that she and Odo can have some private time alone. It turns out that while she's on the station her, in her official capacity as Beta's as representative to the festival, her real purpose is to see Odo and give him a shoulder to cry on about a discovery that the founders are the power behind the Dominion. Odo does not relish the prospect of being the object of so much personal attention from Mrs. Troy, who seems keen to delve into the depths of Odo's pain. Loxana promises to meet Odo before the festival begins and leaves to her quarters, but suffers a sudden headache on her way. The O'Briens have made it back to their quarters, where Miles and Keiko nearly get into an argument about their plans. They're anxious to please one another, but Keiko's running out, and the last thing she wants to do is make any decisions and ask her husband to make the choice instead. The two of them ultimately make plans to go to the promenade, but it's plain that neither of them is pleased with the idea since it is something of a compromise that doesn't go far to please anyone. Finally, the festival is about to begin. Celebrants and performers are walking along the promenade toward the entrance to the Bajoran Temple, where the presider's dies is set up. After a, short, after a show of a brief ceremony, Gear declares the festival had begun, and people start to disperse. Oksana gets in a headache at the same time say at the same time and at the same time so do Jacob Borelli. Ben knows this Jake's twinge of pain, but when Jake asks if, but when he asks if Jake's alright, Jake says he never felt better and starts to smile. Sometime later, Jake walks up to Kieran Officer with Jim just dick, asking for a few moments in private. They stand aside to talk. Jake explains his feelings for an older woman who has no idea how she might feel. Kira believes that he's talking about Marta, but Jacob is a shock and surprise. The woman on his mind is actually Kira, who is speechless. Meanwhile, the Vedic tries, checks on Jadzi attacks after she provides Morgan with advice and starts laying on the compliments, leading up to an announcement that he'd like to get to know her a lot better. Dex's response is one of annoyance, and she promptly excuses herself. Elsewhere, Odo is enjoying some bajor music, and Mrs. Troy catches up to him. He tries to get away, but she follows him. While they're making the way, they counter Dax, who is still mipped at Borelli. And as Odo and Loaxana move off, Dax feels the same twinge that Jake and Borelli did. Miles and Keiko are in Quarks, where the conversation starts out cordially enough. However, Keiko has some bad news. Her project on Bajor turns out to be a lot more complicated than anyone expected, and as a result, it's likely to run two or three months longer than planned. When Miles shares his particularly unhappy opinion about that, Keiko says when her colleague, Sabar, which she's taken as which she's taken as confidant, warned her about Miles' reception of the news. At that, the conversation devolves a straight-up argument, and Miles expressing some suspicion that Keiko has discussed aspects of their personal life with another man, 
The two of them march off from the table in separate directions. Aww. Later, it turns out that Commander Sisko has gotten some news about Jake's crush on Kira and tries to talk to his and tries to talk his son down, but it doesn't work. A few moments later, Mrs. Train and Odor are walking out of Quirks, and they pass by the chief as he sides up to the bar. He finally gets assumed to it's Jake, Borelli, and Jed Zia. Sisko changes his civilian clothes and goes to the wardroom, which is being prepared for in a party of honor of the Gratitude Festival. He finds Dax there, and hears all about her trouble with Borelli. He offers to help sort out the, the drama that's sure to result. But just then Dax, Dax starts draping herself all over him. The commander, meanwhile, is at a loss what's as is at a loss to understand what's going on. The line of strange is with Jake and Borelli, he takes Dax down to the infirmary, but Bashir gives her a clean bill of health. Dax tries to play it off as a joke, and Sisko is embarrassed. However, once they're outside, Dax assures Sisko that this is no joke and she does indeed love him. Meanwhile, the chief is even back to his quarters and is under the impression that Keiko is reevaluating their entire relationship. He asks Keiko to let him in their bedroom, but she doesn't want to talk with him. Sitting outside the door, he apologizes for being selfish and childish and pig-headed. Then he sits down dejectedly and goes on to say that he's left a letter of resignation on Sisko's desk. They started to move down to Bajor and also back to Earth so that he could be nearer to Keiko and Molly without once making any conditions because he loves her and always has. Keiko tells him that she needs time to think, then he has to go to the party in the wardroom. Later, Bashir is with Luxon and Odo Habitat Ring where they encounter Kira, who is very depressed because of Borelli. She explains about Borelli and Jake, and Bashir points out that Dax was acting just as strangely. He decides to return to the infirmary and Kira decides to join him. As they start walking, they both feel the same twinge, twinge as Jake, Borelli, and Dax. Once they get to the infirmary, they look one another in the eyes and without further pause begin to kiss passionately. In the wardroom, Jake is still obsessing about Kira, and Dax tries to keep her distance from Borelli. Commander Sisko puts out a call to Bashir, who doesn't respond, so he sends Odo to the infirmary to retrieve him, and Luxana follows Odo. When Odo gets to the infirmary, Dr. Bashir and Major Kira are still kissing, and Odo needs, needs to order Bashir out of the infirmary. In the wardroom, there are a lot of unhappy and confused people, and the chief brightens up when his wife shows up, right off of that he is especially fond of. Her, her tight red dress. She tells him that she should. She tells him that he should not resign. Gives him a long kiss, and tells him that she loves him. However, there's still a lot of tension elsewhere in the room, and it comes to when Dax goes to Borelli into starting a fist fight with Commander Sisko. Sisko bucks at all of one Borelli's punches with leaves, but then Dax steps in and knocks him out. Quark, who's moving around the room trying to serve food, and he trips over Borelli. Borelli says, "Commander, you throw one hell of a party." Quark continues to move around the room and feels a twinge of his own, and then proceeds to put a serving tray down and declares his, his deep attraction for Keiko. She pulls Quark away from Keiko by the lobes and is about to take things even further when Sisko stops him, says it's not Quark's fault, and then points at Luoxana. In the infirmary, she sure diagnoses Luoxana with Xanthi fever, but she's certain that's impossible since it only affects older betazoids. But she explains to Sisko that, as a result of her condition, Miss Joy has been protecting her feelings of affection, in her case for Odo, and to those who are nearby her when she suffers an attack, which Ellie explains the day's misplaced amorousness from people who have been near, the, been near Mrs. Troy that day, and the latest subconscious attraction to others on the station. Carrying Mrs. Troy's condition, simple matter, and everyone else will, Bashir says, be back to normal in a day or two, which along Sisko tells Bashir to avoid Major Kira. With the festival over, Mrs. Troy, Keiko, and Molly are leaving the station. Luxana tells Odo that she knows about his feelings for Kira, but understands and promises to keep it a secret before assuring him that if he ever gets tired of waiting, she'll be happy to have him in her life. As for the O'Briens, things have been set right. There's nothing late about the chief's love for his wife, and she'll be back to the station in a few months. Well, that's nice. So anyway, let's take a look at some continuity surrounding this episode. No story is given in this episode, however, Dalek mentions it takes two months before Keiko left on the station on an expedition to the Gen Z. She needs some mountains in the House of Quark, and obviously before Borelli's death and life support. Frequent references are made to previous DS9 episodes, including a lock sonatory mentioning her carrying Odo's liquid state in her dress in the Forsaken, Keiko Borelli leaving a body expedition in the House of Quark, and Odo's discovery of his people in the Surge Part 2. 
Alexander Troy's line, a sympathetic ear, a shoulder to cry on, is the same line spoken by Cork at the beginning of the circle regarding his reason for coming to Kira's quarters. This episode is important, important in the development of the O'Brien Bashir friendship. The writers originally wrote Keiko out of the show so they could develop this friendship, and the conclusion of, the epi of this episode, as Keiko leaves the station, Bashir throws O'Brien a ragged, supposedly replacing O'Brien's wife. Indeed, the notion of competition between Keiko and Bashir for O'Brien will become a comic thread upon Keiko's return in the fourth season. The Bajoran Gratitude Festival symbol seen on a banner and small pencil and promenade where it's struck to the logos on to the logos of Tantalus 5 and Elba, and Elba 2 minus the dove. The direction that Kira Bashir displayed this episode was more evident offset. None of us are in Alexander Siddig and Alexander Siddig their display Kira and Bashir, had a son who were married while DS9 was still in production. Kira's pregnancy in the fourth or fifth seasons was written into the show as a result. This is the first episode to openly acknowledge that Oda has feelings for Kira. It is revealed in this episode that despite the animosity between them, Kai would appoint Vedic Borelli to his senior advice story position after her election. This, would remain, this information will return three episodes later in life support. Molly O'Brien's stuffed animal piggy appears to be a stuffed targ. <laughs> That's kind of cute. So, well, this episode is, well, for lack of a better word, fascinating. So, yeah, that's all I can say about it. So, yeah. So, overall, I give Fascination three warp cores out of five. Well, anyway, tune in bed as we do the next episode, Past Tense, Part 1. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.